there's there's more inflation going on than quite a bit more inflation going on than people would have anticipated. Yeah, and there's one very intelligent man who thinks it's dangerous. Hey everyone, it's Mark here. In this video, I'm going to talk about Warren Buffett's remarks that inflation is already here, and I'll go through what exactly is happening with inflation and whether that inflation might be affecting other parts of the economy and what it can tell us going forward and what investment implications there might be. I have a background in finance. I have a PhD in finance. I'm an associate professor of finance, and I'm also a quant and an angel investor. So these are the types of things I follow pretty closely. But of course, if you think I miss anything, let me know that in the comments below. All right, so let's play Warren Buffett, Greg Abel's, and Charlie Munger's full comments in relation to a particular question on inflation at the annual general meeting. And then after that, I'll dissect what they're saying to see exactly what I think about what's happening with inflation. From raw material purchases by Berkshire subsidiaries, are you seeing signs of inflation beginning to increase? Let me answer that. Greg can give more. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very interesting. I mean, it, it, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us. Uh, and it's being accepted. I mean, it's not... Uh, if we get... Well, you know, take home building. I mean, uh, you know, the cost of... We've got nine home builders and, uh, in addition to our manufactured housing thing and then uh, operation, which is the largest in the country. So we really do a lot of housing. <laughs> the costs are just up, up, up. Steel costs, uh, you know, just every day, uh, they're, they're going up. And that, it, they're... There hasn't yet been because the wage, the wage stuff follows. I mean, if the, the UAW writes a three-year contract, you got a three-year contract. But if you're buying steel at General Motors uh, or someplace, you're paying more every day. Uh, so uh, it's it's an economy really. Uh, it's red hot. I mean, and we weren't expecting it. I mean, uh, all our companies when they th they thought when when they we're allowed to go back to work, you know, at, at uh, uh, our various operations. They were, we closed the furniture stores. I mentioned, you know, they were closed for six weeks or so on average. And they didn't know what was going to happen when they when they opened. And, you know, they, they can't stop people from buying things. And we can't deliver them. And they say, well, that's okay. because Nobody else can deliver them either. And we'll wait for three months or something. Of sort. But the backlog grows. And then we thought it would end when the $600... Payments ended, and I think you know around August of last year, it just kept going, and it, it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. And I get the figures every week. I call, or Bumpkin calls me, and we go over day by day what happened at three different stores in Chicago and Kansas City and Dallas, and and it just won't stop. Uh, people have money in their pocket, and and they pay the higher prices, and and when carpet prices go up. In a month or two, you know, we announced a price increase for April. For our costs are going up. Supply chains all screwed up, you know, for all kinds of people. But it's a buy. It's almost a buying frenzy, except certain areas you can't buy yet. You, you know, you really can't buy international air travel. And there's uh, so the money is being diverted from a little, from a piece of the economy into the rest, and everybody's got more cash in their pocket than except for. Meanwhile, you know, it's a terrible situation for a percentage of the people. The, you know, this suit, I haven't worn a suit, you know, for a year practically, and that means that the dry cleaner nurse just went out of business. I mean, and nobody's bringing in suits uh, to get dry cleaned, and nobody's, nobody's bringing in white shirts uh, to, to get to the place where my wife goes. Uh, it, the, the small business person, if you didn't have takeout and delivery services for restaurants, you got killed. On the other hand, if you've got takeout facilities, you've done, you know, same source sales of Dairy Queen are up a whole lot and they adapted. And, but it's, it, it, it is not a price sensitive economy right now in the least. And uh, I don't know exactly how one shows up in different price indices, but there's, there's more inflation going on than, quite a bit more inflation going on than people would have anticipated. Of just six months ago or thereabouts. 
Yeah, and there's one very intelligent man who thinks it's dangerous. And that's just the start. Okay. Greg, you probably are in a good position. To yeah, well, when I think you touched on it, I mean, when we look at steel prices, timber prices, any petroleum input, you know, fundamentally there's pressure on those uh, raw materials. I do think something you've touched on, Warren, and it, it, it goes really back to the raw materials. There's a scarcity of product right now of certain raw materials. It's impacting price and the ability to deliver the end product. But, you know, that scarcity factor is is also real out there right now as, as our businesses address that challenge. And it may be the some of that's contributed or uh, arisen from the uh, storm we previously discussed in Texas. When you take down that many petrochemical plants in one state that the rest of the country is very dependent upon it, we're seeing it flow through both on price but overall in scarcity of product, which obviously go together. But... Uh, there, there's there's challenges, that's for sure. Okay, so what exactly are they saying here? Well, they're basically saying inflation's occurred, and that is accurate, and I'll go through some numbers in a second. But they're also saying another couple of things. Firstly, they're saying that inflation's occurring in particular sets of industries. It's not across the whole economy. It is in particular industries. Secondly, they're saying that some of it is particularly concentrated in natural materials and raw materials, so resources. So focusing on that first one, that there's effectively a bifurcation in the economy where some sectors have had inflation and other sectors have tanked, we can see that manifesting. Anecdotally, we can see that manifesting in, say, the used car market, where we've seen significant price appreciation for some models. And that tells us that perhaps some different parts of the economy are being differently affected. And that's unsurprising. So we think about air travel, Air travel, of course, has tanked, and the money that would have gone into air travel and tourism has redirected into other areas, i.e. goods and services and the like. Similarly with hospitality, and people have still that money when they're employed, but they redirect the money into other areas. We're seeing this in terms of inflation in asset prices, so market prices as well. So, for example, cryptocurrencies have experienced uh, significant and perhaps unmerited increases in prices. Just look at what happened to Bitcoin, where there was significant ramp up in the price, notwithstanding its fundamentals remaining relatively similar. Similarly with the stock market, similarly with asset prices, broadly speaking, we're seeing significant increases in financial asset prices, telling us people are parking the money somewhere, which causes some price inflation due to an increase in demand. That is not necessarily due to money printing. And I'll get back to that in a second. Secondly, Greg Abel in particular talked about natural resources and talked in particular about timber, other resources more generally speaking. So iron ore is another one where demand has caused those prices to increase. That again is not tied to money printing, it's tied to growth and demand. And in particular, when we're looking at this type of thing, it isn't tied to the inflationary or stimulatory measures, sorry, that the government has brought in is more broad based in terms of the demand for these particular resources. Furthermore, things like storms and the like have not helped with that because they've cut down on supply. A third thing I should mention here is that they didn't talk about money printing. And in particular, they didn't really focus on the stimulus measures that the government has brought in. So the $1.9 trillion stimulus measure that Joe Biden had brought in early this year. This stands in contrast to other investors like Michael Burry, who had particularly mentioned this type of thing when alluding to hyperinflation. So we do need to draw a contrast there. That's not to say that Michael Burry is wrong, because Michael Burry had correctly noted that there's more money coming into the economy. The velocity of money, i.e. how much spending is occurring, has perhaps tapered down a little bit. So if the velocity of money picks back up, we could see some inflation. But that's not what Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, or Greg Abel were focusing on here. Rather, they were focusing on those other factors I mentioned before, as to, why that's, uh, as to why we're getting some inflation occurring. And I broadly agree with them. So that's basically what they're saying. Now let's have a look at the data and see what exactly is happening to inflation. And I'll go through CPI growth and what's happening to broader economic growth to draw some insights about what is happening with inflation. Okay, so in this graph, what I have is the CPI percentage change quarter on quarter between particular economies. So in particular, focusing on various major developed economies here. So the UK, the US, Australia, et cetera, et cetera. 
Now, this looks like a bit of a mess, and it's going from 2018 through to 2021, the first quarter where we've got the most recent data. Now, what you'll see is in the most recent data, we're seeing a pickup in CPI growth quarter on quarter. Now, this is a bit of a mess, so I'll zoom in and look a little bit more at what is happening in the United States. So focusing on the United States first, what we'll see is that quarter on quarter, CPI growth has been 0.9%. Now, we can obviously annualize this, and we get about 3.6% when you annualize it. Now, that, of course, is not necessarily accurate because there's seasonal factors we need to draw in here. There's also the fact that we will not necessarily see this 0.9 continue ad infinitum because some of that could represent recovery from the COVID situation. And I'll get to year-on-year -year growth in a second. We're seeing other trends in Australia, which is where I'm based, and we're seeing generally a pickup in CPI growth. CPI growth representing an measure of inflation. So that's broadly what we're seeing in terms of quarter on quarter trends. However, it is worth still looking at what is happening year on year. So if we look year on year, the numbers look a little bit smaller. So year on year CPI growth, i.e. inflation, has been a little bit under 2% across most of these economies here. For some, it has been negative. So Japan, for example, it's been negative. However, for the other ones in this particular set, it has been positive suggesting to us that there is, in fact, some inflation occurring. However, that inflation appears to be below what most central banks are targeting, around the 2 to 3% area. So we have a little bit of a closer look at the US and Australia. What we're seeing in the most recent data is there was a year-on-year -year CPI change, i.e. inflation of 1.9% in the US, around this 1 and a bit percent in Australia. What that tells us is that CPI growth is occurring, inflation is definitely here, but it is not at the insane level where we need to be super concerned right now. It is the type of thing one would need to monitor, but it is not at astronomical levels that would perturb a central bank, because central banks often are targeting inflation slightly above these particular numbers. So inflation is here, but it is not necessarily at hyperinflationary levels, and we don't need to be as concerned as some people are necessarily saying we need to be. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper into some of the other data that might give us some additional insights into what is happening. So firstly, let's have a look at government yields. In terms of the 10-year government yield, that oftentimes rises around inflation increases. Because oftentimes when inflation goes up, central banks feel the need to raise interest rates in order to tamp down on inflation. And here, what we can see is over the past little while, 10-year government yields appear to have increased a bit in 2021. So focusing more specifically on the US here, we can see throughout 2020, government yields tanked, and now they're back up above 1.5%. They've fluctuated quite a bit during 2021, but they're now about 1.6% right now, telling us that 10-year government yields have in fact increased, suggesting that the market thinks that the central bank will need to raise rates. This is despite Jerome Powell saying that he was not intending to raise rates until unemployment really got down much lower than it currently is. In Australia, we're seeing a similar trend, 10-year government rates around the 1.7% area. This, again, is despite the Reserve Bank of Australia stating that they were intending to keep interest rates at all-time lows for at least another couple of years. So we're seeing some increases in government yields that are not necessarily reflective of central bank rhetoric. This tells us the market perhaps anticipates a pickup in inflation that the central bank will need to keep a hold of. So again, this is consistent with Warren Buffett's statement that inflation is here. However, perhaps the market is thinking the central banks will take a hold of the situation and prevent inflation getting out of hand. That could be one way of interpreting it. We can also look at unemployment. Of course, unemployment, like I said, factors into the central bank's goals here. Unemployment rates are still reasonably high, but they're nowhere near as high as they were during the peak of the COVID pandemic in 2020. So if we focus a little bit more on the US and Australia, the US for the longest time before 2020 had really low unemployment rates. However, this still did spike up to around that 14% during the pandemic and is now back down in the high sixes. And that tells us that unemployment rates are still quite high. The central banks, the Fed, wants to get unemployment around the 5% area or thereabouts. 
Similarly, in Australia, we're seeing unemployment rates of around 5.6%. And the Central Bank in Australia wants to again get it down below that 5% area or around the 5% area. What that tells us is that again, both central banks appear to want accommodative monetary policy until such time as employment gets back on track. So that appears to be what's happening here. So unemployment is getting better, which again would tell us that that will factor through into inflation because as more people get employed, more people can go out and spend and that could influence inflation. However, we're still not at the low levels that central banks are particularly wanting. And additionally here, our um, unemployment levels are not at the level that they were before the pandemic, either in the US or in Australia. So our unemployment is still not back down where it was before the pandemic hit, which tells us that while inflation might pick up, employment is still not at the level where inflation would necessarily get out of hand. What about GDP growth? Well, when you get GDP growth, oftentimes you do see a pickup in inflation because the GDP growth, people have more money to go out and spend, and therefore they can go out and spend money. This ramps up demand for goods, which can ramp up inflation. And we're seeing some pickups in GDP growth. But of course, there's some variation. The figures in China are, of course, interesting and are perhaps significantly influenced by COVID, i.e. that significant ramp up in GDP growth is really a year on year compared to what was in the peak of COVID. So we do need to bear that one in mind. But we are seeing some improvements in GDP growth year on year. So if we look at the US, that really tanked, but now we are in positive territory year on year. Australia has not reported its most recent figures. So in Australia, it would appear that there is positive GDP growth, but these are year on year figures. Quarter and quarter figures are quite positive, but we are of course going to be waiting for some more recent figures here. What this tells us is that in Australia more recently, we are going to see some positive information and the most recent quarter and quarter figures have been very positive. And those I have not included in the graph at the moment, but Australia has itself experienced some improvements in GDP. So the quarter and quarter changes have themselves been very positive. Okay, so that tells us a bit about what's happening with the data. Now, it seems that inflation has been picking back up. And this is consistent with what Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Greg Abel are all saying. And this is unsurprising. Unemployment has come down. People have more money to spend. There has been some stimulatory measures. This has all led to some price growth. This is also manifested in increases in the demand for raw materials and some inflation in that particular sector. So again, like I said, they're seeing inflation pick up, and this is also correlated with a pickup in GDP growth and correlated with a reduction in unemployment. And this, to some extent, is good news for the economy. It is, of course, something central banks will need to keep a hold of, because if central banks don't do this, inflation get out of hand. And this could be why the market is causing or is bringing in increases in yields to government bonds, suggesting that they think the central banks are going to need to raise rates in order to try to tamp down on inflation concerns. So in short, that's pretty much what's happening with Warren Buffett's statements that inflation is here. Broadly speaking, yes, he is largely correct that inflation is back on track. I don't necessarily know that or would say that it is out of control or that we need to be so perturbed by it that would be incredibly disturbed about what will happen to the economy. But it is something we do need to bear in mind. Okay, so those are my thoughts on inflation and Warren Buffett's views on it. If you think I've missed anything, or if you have any views on inflation, let me know that in the comments below. And of course, it would be brilliant if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And in any case, I very much hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.